So many people ask me every day in our Discord or our comments or on these videos, and I even see this in other forums and communities. Can you really make four, five, or six figures in music? Can you really make $5,000 a month? Can you make $10,000 a month in music? Really? Really? Nothing but music. But the other thing that everyone wonders, including me, is are these gurus, some of you, which you might be watching now, that talk about music making and music income and sell ebooks and courses and communities and run flash sales like I did this week, <laughs> are they really making money full time? really full-time in music jobs while they hawk their services and their products? Or are they just making music from newbies and semi-pros and wannabe composers for their courses and products and YouTube channels and podcasts? Well, it's time to uncover this hot topic and find out the truth about these music gurus who talk about making music income, <clears throat> like me. Can they be trusted? Can we be trusted? Well, today I have brought a trusted friend into our space that you may recognize to discuss this hot button topic. Can you trust <laughs> these faces? Can you trust us? Well, you trust this beard? No. <laughs> been a lot of beards online this week. Um, welcome to episode 75 of the Make Music Income podcast, where we talk about how to make music income of all kinds including sync licensing and production music for television and film and advertising, stock music licensing, artist income from Spotify and other artist stuff, online channel incomes like making your own channel like this, um, music publishing and royalties, music production for clients, which is what I think we don't pay enough attention to if you want to make some music income. Well, my name is Eric Copeland. And I've literally made hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of dollars over the course of a career, as has my compatriot here. And uh, I've been everything I, I, and still am everything, by the way. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm a composer. I am a background singer, a, a music consultant, a music teacher, a church music director. I've been all these things. Um, and all of these have, have come not from the music business. I have not like worked for a record label. I have not been in the biz, so to speak. I have been around the biz, but I basically made my own biz, which I think is really the key in what we're going to talk about today. But um, I've supported my family for 22 years and I have been making music income for over 40 years. So most of you watching this are just like me. You probably didn't ever get a record deal or a publishing deal, but that doesn't mean you can't make music income. That's what this channel this podcast is all about. Along the way, I'll be answering questions. If you are here in the chat with us, thank you so much for being here. We do our podcast live. We are we're rascalians. We are rebels. We are people on the cusp of technology. I even literally signed up for a Threads account last night. Have you signed up for Threads? No. What, what is what hey, is th what is Threads? I am going to break some news here. Threads is the new Twitter launched yesterday or the day before by Instagram. If you haven't gone and got your 52, I'm not even gonna say that. It, it, you need to get on threads. Uh, it's really easy to do. You just import your Instagram stuff. Yeah. But it's 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 a new Twitter uh, that Instagram is trying to start. I, I just don't I just don't know if I if I if I want that. I mean, of should course. we have it? I just don't know Who if I want it. it. No one wants it. But uh, I'm the but again uh, if my thinking though is if I can have a Twitter type thing that is also tied into Facebook and Instagram and I can hit three things with one stone, I might do it because Facebook, sometimes you can use Facebook and Instagram together when you do your, your, your shorts and stuff like that. But anyway, well, that's another podcast. Let me go ahead and just say that we're glad you're here. Ask us any questions you want along the way. Uh, I'll try to answer anything I can if it's on topic, but 
First, a man who spends so much time working at so many music jobs, it would make your <laughs> head spin 52 times, Mr. Dave Croft. What Eric. is happening, everybody? Man, uh, Eric, thank you so much for welcoming me back uh, onto the Make Music Income podcast. As you know, this is a weekly a weekly staple. I listen to the, to the show every week, so thank you so much. Happy, happy to be here. Yes, and I just listened to yours yesterday, and very great. Hey, if you know both Dave and... Anthony Clint Jr. of Clint Music, great podcast. And if you want to know how to integrate hip hop into a licensing, man, you should go listen to Dave's uh, podcast or watch it on YouTube because they chopped it up, as yeah. <laughs> as, as Clint would say. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to get him back on my show to talk about. Uh, I need to talk about beat making, mm. and I don't even know if he's the guy. I know there's another guy that I'd love to talk to about beat making and, and beats and all that kind of stuff and the income stream there. But he does that, I know. So, yeah. Well, man, let's get into what we've been doing this week. What's your week been like, man? I've been super busy as always, of course, with the 52 Qs community and 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 the uh, the weekly output that we we do there with the Q breakdown and all that other stuff and the podcast, but. Um, last week I got, um, kind of an emergency call from a publisher who is looking for cues for, or, uh, discovery channel reached out to the publisher for a show that's currently on the air. It's called the curious case of Natalia grace. Yeah, and for, for what, cool. for whatever reason, um, they need more music. And so sent out a brief and they're like, Hey, can you knock out like five of these in just like a couple of weeks? And so that's what I've been doing just wrapped up the third one this morning during the live stream. It's good to see Pete. What's happening, Pete? Pete was hanging out with me this morning during the live stream as we uh, put a put a bow on cue number three. And uh, I've got two more to write by the end of next week. So that's that's been dominating uh, a lot of a lot of my week. And we just recently over at fifty two cues. Uh, we we un unveiled a new feature for our our family subscribers, and it's called the briefing room. And what the briefing room does is it gathers it gathers um, composers together, and we kind of put and point our collective compositional energy to actual real life briefs. And so whether it's uh, working directly with a library, you know, and, and, and I am kind of curating those and kind of act as, as, as a publisher or uh, with what we just did this week was we released four albums worth of music for sports, an Goodness. entire album of epic hip hop, contemporary hip hop, rock and EDM pop and funk. So 60 tracks across, um, like several, several different composers. And uh, it was absolutely amazing. We, we spent the last two months kind of going back and forth, workshopping the cues, putting them all together. And uh, we shipped those off. And it always feels really good when you ship off uh, like four albums worth of cues up to CBS Sports. So really excited about that. Very cool. Well, that briefing room sounds really cool. Yeah. You've you got a lot of cool things going. Um. All right. Well, my week has been, um, you know, it, it, I do not like holiday weeks, especially when the holiday falls on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> that just makes the week like what day is this? You just never know, especially when you're going and trying to stay on a schedule I, at school. We have a, you know, uh, a nine week schedule and now it's off by a day. And it's like day two is now day three. It's madness. No, they don't, they but, don't try to work it in like at full sale with the same thing, which is why I have class tomorrow on Saturday, I have <laughs> oh, Saturday no. class. They don't do that. They don't uh -uh. squeeze it in. Uh, they can't, we can't do that because we don't have weeks in between, right? We have uh, a four week chunk uh, and then in week five, the next week starts. So you, you don't have any break between your, your cohorts. You go right from the four week bunch to the next four week. bunch. Yep. Wow. And then, okay. and then that will happen until we have a summer break and we have our summer break coming up at the end of July. And then we have a fall break and we have a winter break and a spring break. It's possible there'd be no breaks at ours. If there were no holidays messing things up. Yep. <laughs> so if there were no d weekly holidays messing anything up and there, for nine weeks, which rarely happens, but uh, for a three week cohort, I mean, we have nine week and six week and three week mm. things. So it's oft, it's not often that I've gone through and never had a break. But all that to say, it's been crazy trying to do that. Every We're doing sound design this week, which is really fun. 
Um, and so the students get to, to do a, a Wally clip oh, cool. uh, and, and then do sound design to it. So they have fun. It's usually one of the more fun things they do. But um, anyway, that's been happening. Let's see what else has been going on. Uh, I have been contracted by my library and I talked about this last week, I think, but uh, and this is part of what I'm, I'm going to actually save all the things that I am personally working on and have worked <laughs> on this week for my rant down below when I talk <laughs> about one of our little topics here, because I've got a lot of things on my composer plate right now and um, and, and loving it as, as get as Maxwell Smart used to say and loving it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Max, you'll be in certain danger the entire time and loving it. But uh, yeah, I, I will talk about all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of client things as usual that I'm doing for people and uh, as well as school. I'm trying to move to more of a consultant role with every client. I just do not have time to be making websites and be doing all the things I've done for years for money. I'm going to have to find some people to work with. If you are at, listening to the sound of my voice and you are interested and you are a pro at website development, um, song development, I know there's a lot of song people thinking that you might be able to do this, but I have a very, have a very high bar. It's got to be my bar. You better be as high as me to do this for me. But I'm going to have to sub out work is the, is the bottom line of these yeah. things. Uh, I, I've, got, I've got the school job. I've got my composing and I've got this channel and educating, composing and educating is what I'm focused on. And so I've got to probably start to let the others yeah, get go. some help, man. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't do it all. Well, I have help in Nashville, but they're expensive. And, and when I have people coming in who want to spend money, I have that there. But what I don't have is, is, is people who do good work at a low price. Like I've done my, most of my career, I've tried to be very fair to clients and, and, and say, what do you have? How, how can I help you with the budget you have? And sometimes that's 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or 150. And it's hard to get a pro to do something for 50 bucks, you know, a yeah. super pro. A super pro. And, yeah. and that, my, my problem is I really only have super pros. I don't have anybody in between super pro and me other than me. Yeah, it's like so. you can have it good. You can have it fast or you can have it cheap. <laughs> exactly. And uh, anyway, I'm used to it just being super high level and taking as much as it takes and as yeah. long as it takes, you know. And the, the end of that is pick two. You can have a good, cheap, or fast. Pick two, but you can't have all three. Right. Yeah. Uh, good to have a lot of people here. Julian Hartwell is in the house. Pete, as I, we already said, is in the house. Bradford's in the house. Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. Um, today's podcast is brought to you by Make Music Income Daily, a slow-growing uh, sponsor. Uh, I don't even what, what do you call these things? Uh, memberships. You should membership. membership. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying that. Uh, doing a, a morning video. did a little pre-game uh, video this morning for the people who are following there. We'll see how, how this goes. I, again, you know, monetizing my channel, and I'm sure you, you know how this is, monetizing, which is what we're talking about. Our gurus just interested in monetizing their channels. That's way harder than you would think it is. I mean, we get on here to talk about the stuff that interests us. That's why we started. And, and then everyone's saying, well, you can monetize this way, monetize that way. And you're like, eh, you know. I just want to really talk about, I got on this channel because I would hear Stevie B talk and I'd hear different people talk and I'd just be like, I want to tell. I got something to say. Yeah, well, and, and my results were different than their results. You know, my outcomes were different than their outcomes. And I wanted to talk about that. So, yeah. but Make Music Income Daily, you can check it out at makemusicincome.com slash daily and be part of that. It's very, very, very cheap and, and kind of cool to see what's going on every day or as, as most days. I'm, I do this most days. I'm, I'm pretty good at, uh, at doing this, but um, not perfect at it, I will tell you that. So, well, all right. It is that time of week. People literally wait for this uh, all broadcast, but it's now time for the news. And our first news item today is Cakewalk makes a comeback. Now, if you don't know what Cakewalk is, I will just say to you that Cakewalk was my first doll. And uh, actually, uh, it, it was what when I used it, it wasn't a doll. 
Cakewalk was a sequ- what we called a sequencer. And a sequencer uh, doesn't uh, have the ability to do uh, audio, and neither did Cakewalk in 1995. <laughs> uh, it, it might have even been earlier that I was using. It was like the first one that, that you could use. It wasn't too expensive. And, uh, but then they morphed and they got their next level when DAW became a thing and, and Pro Tools was starting to come up and other things like Logic were coming along trying to be a DAW, still not owned by Apple yet. Um, Cakewalk was trying to move to that next level. And the way they were trying to move to that next level was with a program called Sonar. And so um, this is kind of a, um, it's not actually out yet, but they're, they're finding ways that you can be part of it. But I, I thought it was interesting. And especially because of my background, um, I was just, I was just super interested in the fact that um, Cakewalk was coming back. Cakewalk is now, Actually, I believe owned by BandLab, which has an app out on the phones that a lot of my students use. It's a beat making program. And then there is a free PC version of Cakewalk that it looks very much like this. It's a little, that's why this is a little confusing because they've got <laughs> Sonar, they've got a free version of Cakewalk, but I, I'm taking it that Sonar is their big competitor to Logic or their competitor to what's another one that's, um, Ableton or um, darn it, I can never Studio One. Studio One, yeah. Studio One probably would be the best co- uh, thing. But I just think it's interesting because it's near and dear to my heart that uh, that this happened because you know I I love uh, I love Cakewalk and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside that they're trying to come back. Yeah, that, that's kind of like when when Reason, you know, uh, recently you know with Reason Twelve and they're really pushing you know, pushing into new territory and you can, you can install it as a plugin that cause reason was kind of really my first like grown up DAW mm-hmm. Not, that wasn't, you know, acid pro or fruity loops. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that I feel the same way about reason. There's a nostalgia that I just can't quit. Yeah. And it's still a thing. As a matter of fact, reason it's a full fledged doll and everything now. Right. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it, and it has been, but, uh, but the, yeah, it's new object object synthesizer it's modeling physical modeling synth is mm-hmm. next level it's really really impressive anyway cool. not a commercial for reason <laughs> well this is a commercial um 50 <laughs> ways to make music income is a free ebook that i have and since we're talking today about um you know how to it, can you actually make music income i do want to talk about this because uh i like to offer free stuff every single video um i would rather offer you free stuff and, and let you get um, some information on how to get going. Uh, this is what this thing is about to teach you. So um, I started this ebook making 25 ways and, and I've since looked at it recently. I'm getting ready to do some shorts based on it. And there's actually way more than this. There's like, I could p- push this to 75 real fast, probably to hundred, but you can get this here and you can get it at makemusicincome.com slash free. There's all the free stuff there. A lot of free eBooks and courses and it's all free, free for you to have and enjoy. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, let's see, does it ask me? Yes, yeah, share this tab instead. Um, the Discover, um, the BBC, uh, we talked about this last week, I, or I should say, I talked about this last week, that they have a new grand piano in uh, the Discover collection now. It just came out, but last as of last week, it wasn't part of the free discover um, part from, from, from Spitfire. But what I understand is it is now I have not gone in and downloaded it yet, but uh, I've been watching some videos from the Spitfire. Great guys at Spitfire. Paul from Spitfire was doing some, some, uh, some demos on the Spitfire site about using this. And, and uh, I'm sure there are some limitations, most likely microphone placements, you know, I think it's um, it's mic positions and stuff. yeah. Yeah which really don't interest me that much. I mean, I don't fool around with those that much. I'm sure you do, but I Very should, little. I just, I just don't. So yeah, I, I fool around with um, like pedal noise and hammer noise. Like uh, my personal pet peeve is yeah. goofy felt pianos. It's like every, it's like, I can't unhear that. Felt pianos, man. You know, everybody asks me, should I go for the complete pianos? And I'm like, yes, if you need a felt piano, but guess what? Felt piano is one style. 
That's of, right. It's it's useful for one thing, really. And noir and all the unicorda, they're they're cool instruments, but I need a when hey, listen, folks, when we go into the studio, we record on an on a Yamaha grand piano. That's it, it's pretty much like every studio's main piano is a Yamaha grand piano. Now, I'm not saying Yamaha is the only thing you could use. This is a modern after a, a Steinway, which is, is useful for classical and lots of different things. And I used to have a Steinway in the studio, but I found it never really sat well in pop music, the Steinway. Yeah. might have been that Steinway, but I've just felt like Yamaha's always cut better and they cut through the mix better. And um, another, I can't remember which one this is, but I'm going to share this tab as well. Another free uh, grand was just released. And this is a Yamaha by um, Labs, Spitfire Labs. I haven't downloaded this yet or played with it. As you might be able to see here, uh, I am missing. There's a big sp empty space here where my 88 note <laughs> controller used to be. I sold it <laughs> to upgrade my computer. And, and I'm kind of waiting because I, there are other controllers. Uh, you know, everybody's upgrading their controllers right now. And I have a feeling that Native Instruments is getting ready to introduce a new 88 note uh, keyboard and also uh, Arturium. But anyway. Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm I'm using a, a, a cheap yeah. uh, Alesis 88 key stage piano. It's like $200. And the action is not anywhere near what an actual piano is, which... The reviews, it was a liability, but for me, like trying to do like finger drumming or fast string patterns on on a heavily weighted actual piano, eighty eight key is really really tough for me. Well, that's I'm why not, I have this. Not a, that's I'm not a pianist. I've always been a sixty one and eighty eight guy. I have to have yep. both. I have to have sixty one to do synthy drums and everything and strings, yep. and then I have to have eighty eight for electric piano for piano for anything else that really for yeah. just those two, but I, I do a lot of piano music. Yeah, you I do. mean, no. I do a lot of solo piano music. And so I have to have a great controller. I have my eye on one, but I'm kind of waiting out this summer because everybody is putting all their is starting to, there's a new keyboards coming out like crazy. Cork's got new keyboards coming out like bigger versions of the wave state and all this stuff I saw yesterday. That's for, I, we could talk about keyboards all day. <laughs> Um, as But as far as this is concerned, as this BBC free piano and other free pianos, do you have any free pianos that you recommend, Dave, that you might, that I'm missing? Uh, to be honest, no. Uh, I mean, the Labs felt is good if you want to go felt, but yeah. um, but to be honest. Well, look piano, at this. This is not a felt one though, right? Or is no, it? No, no, I don't think so. But I, my go-to free is the one that came with Logic. The Steinway, yeah. the stock Logic Steinway is great. The stock Ableton piano is great. The stock Reason piano is really, really good. So before you before you sleep on uh, on uh, what came in stock, you might not even need that new plugin. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm with you on Logic, except I would be a Yamaha uh, yeah. grand person on there. See, I know you're a that Yamaha. Said, guy. I'm a Steinway guy, like through and through. <laughs> that said, I will tell you that. Two weeks ago, I had to go to Lexington for a funeral and I had to play and sing at a funeral. I had only, <laughs> what a setup. I had a laptop, uh, uh, an old Mac laptop with GarageBand on it. A um, uh, some uh, my, this, this 61 note keyboard that I had taken to do some work. I didn't do any work and uh, hooked it through at my mother, my uh, aunt's karaoke box and that's what i used and i used the steinway grand and i played and sang with that and nobody knew the difference yep. you know it, it worked just fine luckily i had a pedal so it was it was not bad and it worked yeah. and so yeah. so free pianos can be had i i if you know i have a lot of other things to say about keyscape and all those kind of things if you don't want free but if you do want free check out the bbs bbcso you should really if you have any orchestral designs at all and you don't have any money you should probably have the bbcso or the discovery yeah it's yeah. absolutely great on, i mean on the other hand and uh i can't remember if you touched on this last i don't i don't i don't know if we needed another piano in 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 the sample space i mean <laughs> I guess they're trying to put something that would go with the orchestra and maybe yeah. they felt like that was missing. And, yeah. And as a BBC SO, like early adopter day one, I was really disappointed that it wasn't included for the, with the, the full and it wasn't even offered at a discount. And so that, that felt a little, I didn't, I didn't appreciate that, but that's yeah. all right. 
I mean, All right. Um, before we get to the uh, a few more things here, uh, I've been having a flash sale over on my site, and you can see it here. Um, it, I've been kind of uh, running some ads on my premium coaching and also on my um, uh, on my uh, six my three song critique. And uh, taking that down from $125 down to $89 and throwing in both eBooks. So if you are interested in that, I haven't really been pushing on my channels. I am uh, pretty much in the Graham Cochran uh, sell only on your email list. Do not sell on videos. I, I try not to sell too much on videos and just give away more on videos. But uh, I do want to let you know that I'm going to take this off tonight at midnight. So if you do want to talk to me through Zoom, uh, this is about as cheap as it's going to be. Or if you want to get some songs critiqued, uh, this is about as cheap as that's going to be. And that ends tonight. So make sure you take advantage of that. Um, if you watch this later or listen to it later and you go, hey, I want to be part of that, I'll, I'll do it. We'll talk about it. Uh, and you can just find that at makemusicincome.com. Don't forget, we're starting a mastermind soon for a 10-week mastermind. Uh, it's still coming together. I've got three people already. I probably need six or eight. Uh, that's about the right amount of people for uh, a mastermind. And uh, we might be doing it live. Uh, so far, everybody is saying I'm fine to be on camera. So we'll be doing that on the Hello Composers channel because this is uh, going to be trying to compose or write 10 songs in 10 weeks. Just something fun to do. You can get on the wait list at makemusicincome.com. So with all this selling, <laughs> are you really making money with your music, Mr. Eric Copeland, make music income guy, or are you just selling stuff? Well, I haven't sold many of those. I'll tell you <laughs> not many. I've, I've made only, I haven't made anything with this yet. Nobody's really joined yet. And, and only two people did this. So no, that is not what is making me music income. What is making me music income is the music work that I do. And so the first question that I really want to ask, because this, this question can't, comes up all the time and, you know, we, and, and it actually comes up with me. I mean, I'm watching YouTube channels just like you are. I'm listening to the podcast. Dave and I both listen to podcasts all week, right? I, I drive every day. I need podcasts to listen to. And there's just like a spider web or something. Um, I, I need podcasts to listen to as I drive. And so I listen to Dave and I listen to Clint and I listen to other people and I need, listen to a lot of ESPN sports, <laughs> sports things, but I need information. So I am wondering exactly who can I trust as I'm listening to this people. Now, this video is absolutely for you. If you may wonder if you can make full-time music, uh, full-time money and income with music. And I understand that it sometimes seems a little daunting, especially when you're first starting. And it also seems confusing when there are tons of YouTubers who flat out declare they are no longer making music, but are still talking about how you can make music and make 4,000, uh, four figures, five figures, six figures a year doing it. Uh, there are some literal uh, cases of that. I'm not going to go into who is doing that, but one of the main people in our space literally says, I am not composing anymore, but let's talk about sync licensing. And now remember in some cases that person may not make music, but they are still making income from that music that they have had in there and they made for 10 years or more. And uh, they don't need to make any more music right now if they want to. Personally, I don't see how they don't. As a composer, I can't not compose. But um, still, <clears throat> we see people make it and make money from it. That's what we want to see. What's how We want to see people making it and coming up with the ideas, just like Dave's podcast and his conversation with Clint yesterday. They were really getting into how uh, things work and then you know, on this channel, I like to talk about how I make music and then how I make money from that music. We need the proof it can be done. And that's what I try to show is that it can be done and we want to have what they're having. And so we get discouraged when a YouTuber or content maker uh, suddenly switches away from doing the thing that we started following them for. I have a whole story about this 
But uh, before I do, any any thoughts about this? Well, as far as who can you trust, I think I think our 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 gut will tell us more than we give it credit for. I think if you're getting vibes off people, whether whether they're whether it, it, it's whether it's accurate or not, if if you feel that they can't be trusted and you're getting skeevy vibes or whatever, then just walk away. Let them go do their thing. It's totally fine. Whether they're hawking, you know, courses and, and, and or whether they're like legitimately like invested in you. If you're not resonating with that person, it's totally fine to just step away and, and move on. You don't have to say anything snarky in the comments. You don't have to go on a soapbox of, of righteousness. Just, just walk away, but trust, trust your gut. Because I think, I think we can sniff out authenticity uh, more than we probably give ourselves credit for. I have a story about this kind of thing. And, and, the, and what's funny is I remember uh, I've seen this happen many times and we're watching this YouTuber and suddenly they vanish or they declare, and I guess I can take my premium coaching slide down, Dave. Um, they declare that, uh, the, the famous thumbnail, I quit. It's, it's the one, I don't know if you've ever done it. I haven't done an, I quit. Have you done an, I quit a uh, thumbnail yet? Uh, I no, uh, -uh. but I think didn't like PewDiePie just like, uh, like the pute, like this giant YouTuber who's just like, I'm going away and it, you know, it generates all this buzz and everything. And no, yeah. anyway, well, I follow uh, PewDiePie. I I've been watching a recent channel, a YouTube channel about making, I, I watch some YouTubers that talk about YouTubing, you mm -hmm. know, um, not many, but a few. And, uh, it's dedicated to, I'm not going to say the name of the channel, but it's dedicated to channel makers. And uh, they had a very strange video about how indeed it wasn't the guy, the guy who usually does the channel started talking about the fact that, guess what? I'm not the main guy that you've been watching for two years. I've actually got a 10 person studio team and they start going behind the scenes and showing all the team uh, that they have doing all the videos, all mm. the behind the scenes stuff, all the writing and all the shooting and all the, all this kind of stuff. And then it linked to a one minute video where the host very uncomfortably and, 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 and hesitantly quit and said goodbye. Oops. <laughs> and the comments were just hilarious. Everyone. I mean, it'd be like, I, I mean, I know, you know, everyone knows, of course, you and I have 10 person teams behind us, making sure all of this is happening. Right. Um, hold on a second. Uh, can you get the camera on me a little bit more? There yeah, you go. No, the extra. No, no. Evian ice cubes. The ice cubes <laughs> made from Evian <laughs> could help us so hard to find there. <laughs> it really is. But uh, everybody thought this guy was a solo YouTuber like you and me. And uh, I mean, you, you, I know you have help. And, uh, you have like a, a one person. It's, it's, yes. Group. My wife, you know, <laughs> Shannon helps. Yes. But, um, still, um, it's not a 10 person crew filming all your videos and all that kind of stuff. It's a 10 button queue. You have <laughs> buttons that you push. Right. I get one of those is what stream deck, man. It's what's up. Yeah. I need that. But, uh, the, by the way, the guy has hastily put up a channel under his own name and more drama is ensuing. But we all wonder when these channel makers, these people, who can we trust to give us information? And uh, so I just want to talk next, though, about how, let's get back to this, this topic, can you really make a living at music? And you can. But I'm telling you that it's not the way you think. Most people think, oh, I'll watch Jesse's channel and learn about sync licensing or watch Dave's channel and learn about production music, and I'll just work really hard, and that will become a living for me and that will make me a music living and I'll give it a couple of years uh, or maybe just six months or so just to see if anything happens. And then they realize there's no way in God's green earth that this is going to pay all my bills. There's just no way. When I was talking with um, Tom Dupree, the third, who is one of my YouTubers I follow and people mm -hmm. I trust about, um, making music as an artist and getting on Spotify and things like that. Uh, he, he mentioned a great, I asked him how you make money. And he says, I make money 
from a portfolio of small bets. That's exactly the way he put it. His name is Tom Dupree the third. Go look him up on YouTube. But I thought that was genius. I, I and I'm sure this comes from some sounds like a Dickens type of a port. He had a portfolio of small bets. But uh, basically, what this means is you have a bunch of little jobs that add up to an income that works. And basically, um, that's what I have. I have made and will, and I've made before and will be close this year to possibly to six figures. But that is a lot of music jobs all adding up into one thing and royalties. We'll talk about that, but it's real. It's actual, but sometimes it's not always satisfactual. And I'm not even sure I can say that anymore now that they closed down Splash Mountain. But um, <laughs> that's a little PC Disney World humor there. Um, my income is about 50% client work. And these are people you will never see uh, unless I feature them because this is a whole different business that I've been doing for 20 years. And so um, that is one part of one of my small bets, one of my incomes, but that's 50% of my income. I have a whole business uh, that it, that feeds into that, that they pay me monthly and, uh, and or for the year or whatever. And then about 40% of my income comes from teaching, mostly from teaching at a local school like Dave does here at a local recording school. And then a little bit here on the the podcast and the channel. This, this does not make me much income at all. Probably three or 4% of my income last year was the channel. And then the other 10% is probably royalties from licensing and sheet music and Spotify and all that kind of stuff that I don't spend as much time on as I need to, to really grow that. And I'm trying to grow that. I hope that eventually some of that client income comes down and the licensing stuff comes up, but that's how my my income, that's the reality of me making only music stuff. Now you might say, oh, well, the music teaching job is a job. It is, but it's a music job. I, we talk about music. I talk about the same things I talk about here every day there. And I bet you do too. Dave, what's your mm -hmm. uh, portfolio of small bets? I yeah, uh, very similar, uh, actually. I just... Um, uh, my gig at full sale. I mean, that's probably like 50% of my income, if not, if not more. Um, and I have substituted a lot of gigging. I used to do a ton of theater gigging and all that stuff. And I've paired that back and that was supplanted essentially by 52 cues. The money, if I, like if we just look on paper, the money I was making gigging 52 cues in the community and, and like lessons and, and subscriptions over there, that, that helps out with that. And then the other 25% would essentially be uh, back in and royalties or actual composing work, which takes it, it, different forms of, you know, uh, some upfront sync fees or uh, back in royalties or the, the odd, uh, the odd off, you know, call me maybe arrangement for, mm -hmm. for woodwind trio. Cheap that's music, living. Yeah. Yep. Cheap music, uh, which is very, very, very tiny, but uh, it's probably 50 teaching, 25% 52 cues, 25% composing. Cool. Cool. Um, well, uh, and, and that is, that's two guys who you listen to most likely on these channels that make a, a solid full-time living. And we don't, I don't, you, I don't have anything else. There's no other, like, uh, I don't work at like, uh, uh Oh, somebody <laughs> forgot to, uh, put uh, airplane mode on their phone <laughs> this, because my camera is my phone right. but luckily that won't Whoopsie. matter for you, for you <laughs> podcasters nothing <laughs> nothing's changing here um but uh i i i don't work at like Publix to make a little extra cash and i don't work at other places but anyway that is the bottom line of 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 you know our incomes as full-time yeah. music people um, next, what I want to do is basically talk about then if I have all this music income, why did I start a channel, a, a, a YouTube channel? Do I, do I need mo more money? Well, yeah, of course I need more <laughs> money because I don't want to work for clients my whole life. I want to, uh, that's why I went and got a master's degree so I could go and teach. Um, I felt like having that would be best, not just because I wanted to be the smartest person in the room, although I did, but, um, and I am 
let's just let's just be plain. Not mm -hmm, in yeah. this room. Not in this room right now uh, with this guy. But uh, I, I feel like the master's degree helped me to be ready. But I decided to start my channel because, and I imagine this is the same thing with you, Dave, but um, I was motivated because I was watching videos we talked to earlier about from Jesse and Daniel and Stevie B and Tom Dupree and other people. I don't think I'd found your channel until I actually started my channel. Mm. But uh, the results and income that they were having were different from mine. Plus, they were focused on one music income stream like sync licensing or stock music licensing or Spotify. And uh, I was doing all things. And I, I thought and still think that I wanted to talk about all the portfolio of musical things, all the portfolio of, in, of possible incomes. And I think that is the smartest way. And that's why I put this video together today that it, can you make a living in music? Yes, but you're going to probably have to do a lot of things. That's where I made most of my income producing uh, through my life. It's been mostly producing. But I just don't make it full-time producing anymore. I make it in other ways like teaching now. Um, so tell, talk about why you started your channel. I'm going to fix my phone. Uh, yeah, I, start, I started the 52Qs channel uh, originally because uh, I, I wanted it to be an extension of the group that once upon a time we had on Facebook. And I wanted to kind of document my journey of writing one Q per week. But then it slowly turned into teaching. It was basically little lectures. And so uh, I've deliberately not focused on monetizing my channel. I've not focused on doing all the youtube -y stuff that all those YouTube channels say to do as far as like length of content, the type of editing, the type of thumbnails and SEO. Because my channel and the, the videos over at 52 Qs are there to support a very narrow focused audience, which are production music composers, and it supports 52 cues. I get, I mean, if you, if I were to pull up my monetization statistics, it's they're, they're pitiful because everything says, don't, don't sit there and talk to a camera for an hour, right? That's yeah. going, that's, that's not what YouTube wants. He says but, at 44 minutes, but that's what <laughs> I want. That's the content I respond to. And, uh, and so I don't do a ton of editing. I don't do a ton of like B-roll and insertions and, uh, and, uh, I just let it roll. Like the interview that I rolled out yesterday with Clint, it had zero, I think zero editing because the conversation was real. It was authentic. It was transparent and I just let it roll. Right. Even, and it, it's as long as it is, as yeah. long as it is. So my, my channel supports 52 cues, supports the composers and supports the community. Everything else just is not even secondary or tertiary. It's quaternary. It's so far down my priority. Yeah, this is this channel, like I said, accounts for probably 3% of any income I get. Um, uh, that, uh, I, I don't sell really hard. Uh, you know, the most selling I did is what you've seen today. Yeah. Uh, or through my email list, which is what an email list is for, really. Yeah. Um, so we are practicing what we preach. Uh, there is a reason why I call myself in this order, composer slash educator. I compose, I arrange, I want to spend my time making things, but I also like to talk. I also like to share these experiences, and I know you're surprised at that, but uh, making I'll tell you, uh, making videos and thumbnails and podcasts and shorts and doing all these things that go on this channel is making content and content is fun. I like making content. It's a lot like composing, but just to give you an idea of what I am doing behind the scenes is, uh, and by the way, make music income daily. If you want to know what I'm doing behind the scenes, but for just this week, this is what I'm working on. A 10 song Christmas album for an exclusive library, a 10 song percussion album for an exclusive library, three Jimmy Buffett songs, finished a classical piece video. And I'm making a video about the process of how I'm moving that from logic over to uh, Muse score four, kind of a Muse score four review. Um, distributing 15 classical sonatas I got back from a library. There's more, but that's just my current week of what I'm trying to get done this week. If you think I am a, trying to be a YouTuber salesman, you are quite mistaken. I am killing it on the behind the scenes, and that doesn't even include clients. How about you? 
What are you doing behind the camera? This uh, week? It's just, it's so supporting the community, you know, because we do, we have office out weekly office hour, zoom sessions. I do feedback and critique. I've got my mastermind with like folks from Australia and Japan and Alabama, like, and, and so it's so much supporting the community and the composers which is why I had to like step back from gigging. It's why I've stepped yeah. back from doing all of these other things so that I can, I can keep the main thing, the main thing. And uh, that, that's, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. But you haven't even talked about the composing that you're doing. Yeah. That's because it's, 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 it's probably 30 to only 30% of my, of my world. And so yeah. I have to maximize like everything that I do. Like I don't just write for myself, everything that I write goes like immediately out the door the cue that we wrote this morning during the live stream i've already sent it off to the wow. publisher for for and, and i and i wrote it this morning knocked it out in about three hours and um and that will be one of two or three cues that i've written this week but i've got to, i have to maximize i don't have time to just kind of daydream and and, yep. and explore the space and that's and my you're, flow you're kind of um, putting the percentage of time into the percentage of what it makes you, would you say? Probably. Yeah. And I, and I've long since come to peace with that. Cause I used to think, man, if only, if I wasn't teaching full-time, if I was a full-time composer, then I could get full-time income. But I realized Maybe. I didn't, I didn't want to stop teaching. Right? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want it. So in me, like the reason I can talk to, on a podcast for an hour about PROs is because I love talking about this stuff yeah. mm -hmm. and um and i don't i don't have to choose it's not a binary and, decision and i think most of the people you'll know the people who aren't in it for your benefit mm -hmm. because they will not be doing weekly every week content that they want you to learn from they will they will be doing once a year seminars and webinars to get you to buy a two thousand dollar course everybody else is going to be like Dave and I and barely able to figure out how to charge somebody eight ninety nine, eight dollars and 99 cents, uh, <laughs> you know, on, to, to be part of a course or a community or something. Yeah. And so we are not trying to do that. We are actually wanting to teach and talk about what is happening with us because that is what is interesting. So we are real composers, just saying, just talking a lot <laughs> to people we're we're real composers we're real teachers we're we're talking we're we're not just talking heads trying to bilk you into huge yeah. expensive it, things and and i and i do think it's it's really important that when when you when you you kind of buy into somebody and i don't mean just like physical money when, when you decide to give somebody an hour of your time and you you you're like okay i'm trusting them I think it is important that they are practicing what they're pre that they are doing the thing actively. It's it's one of the things that full sale encourages us to do. It's why I can Absolutely. like I can get continuing education credit from learning how to use Omnisphere. Like I can yeah. get credit for that. Um, and so make make sure that the people that you're pouring into are are pouring back into you, yes. but also developing their own career. It might not be full time. Like I'm not a full time composer, but I have I have to write. Otherwise, it, it atrophies. So yeah, the reason we talk, the reason we teach and, and talk about it comes from our own experiences. Our schools want us to keep having those experiences, so we're yep. fresh and we're current, and we're composing and pitching and getting paid or not getting paid. We may not like the outcomes that we have, but we can show them to you. These are not the outcomes you are looking for sometimes, you know, uh, but we also can share big wins. It's not yeah. bragging. It's this could happen to you. It's happened to me this month. Next month, I could show you where I made $5 off of one yeah. library or something. It, yeah, it's why I tell my students that I'm not better than you. I'm not more talented. I'm just a future version of you. I'm just you just yes. further down the same path. We're on Absolutely. the same path. Yeah. yeah, you work for 20, 30 years like I have and Dave has come back and talk to us. You'll probably be in the spot we are and making the music incomes we make because that's what it took for us to be honest with you. It, yeah. It's not something we started just when we started this channel. It's something we started 20 years before we started this channel. That's right. Yeah. So we all are here for you. We all want to help you make music income. Uh, that's about all I have. I don't, I haven't seen many questions today. Um, 
Walter Williams, Walt says, thanks for teaching, really teaching. Well, we, we are hoping we are doing that very much. Uh, and you. so appreciate all that we're here today. Uh, I know Dave's got to go on to his next uh, yeah. small batch. I, I have a uh, podcast recording <laughs> session coming up in eight minutes we go. <laughs> so from a guy gonna, in Toronto, right? We're going to call it here, folks. Um, send me any uh, comments in this thing. I, I see some questions. Um, do you want to go and I'll take some questions? I, or... I, I can hang out for a few more minutes. Your boy Pete Mason's yep. got a question. How many placements would it take to bring in a decent income from composing only in a year? Answer that one in. Oh, um, wow. Uh, I think, I mean, you need several hundred placements in order to, to de decent income. And it depends on the type of placements, you know, um, if, if you're getting a lot of love, like if something lands on a show and then that show gets rerun, then you might, you might get quite, quite a lot. But if you get like a featured placement on a high profile sports broadcast or something, that broadcast is only going to go out once, but you might get, you know, two or 300 bucks for that placement. Um, but it's all about having a bunch of little teeny tiny irons in the fire. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, but ha the number of placements, it's probably in the, in the hundreds, I would say. Pete, Pete, the decent income comes from a lot of places and not just placements. The placements could be one part of your, your portfolio of, yep. of incomes, but it's not going to bring in, when you say a decent income, I assume you mean 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. It's, uh, you know, those placements likely, unless you have a thousand placements to 2000 placements, then you can start thinking, all right. And, and they are useful <laughs> just because you have a thousand placements. If they're all only uh, classical music cues, it may not be something that every show needs or wants to use. And all that. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at a $50,000 income, you're looking at over $16,000 a quarter, you know, and yeah. if each, and if each placement is like, like say even, yeah, sixteen thousand dollars divided, you know, by the number of placements you would need. It, yeah, it, it would be a lot of placements, which is why it doesn't happen overnight. This is this this career does move forward, but it, the the arc bends very slowly. Yeah, it doesn't pay first and fifteenth of every month, folks. It pays mostly in in in, in what he's talking about is production music. Then that is going to pay every quarter. Uh, yeah. There are some upfronts sometimes, but it's mostly back end, and that is one time, four times a year. You'll get you'll get some. Yeah, money. I mean, I've had royalty checks as low as forty one cents and as high as twenty three thousand dollars. So, yeah. Um, Natuno says, "How do I find great music libraries for sync? You search for them with your browser, and uh, and or there are people like Clint, who we've talked about today, who has a great book on where you can find all the companies and send your." demos too, and see if you can start, um, some good, uh, relationships. So, uh, yeah, Arco says search on Google. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a, that's what I did. And that's how I got all of my libraries. I did not get one of them from taxi from a suggestion, uh, by magic anyway. Um, are you still good? Or you got it? I, I do Sorry. actually, I need, do need to bounce. So all I right. really appreciate you having me on. My pleasure. We'll see you next time. I'm going to stay on here and answer All a right. few more questions. Yes, sir. And Dave, thanks again for being here today. And we'll see you next time, bro. All right. All right. Be well, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Ciao. All right. Now you're just stuck with me. I'm going to answer a few questions that are coming in here. Marty, good to see you, man. Is it realistic to aim for an additional composer job on a TV series? Well, I guess so. I think that you're going to have to probably... <sighs> I, I don't know if those jobs are as available to people without relationships in LA at where these series are being made. Now, uh, I know you're up in, in Canada, up in Vancouver. There's a lot of shows being probably made up there. You've got to make relationships with people and, um, and have such a long history of composing credits and all that kind of stuff. I think in order to start to get that kind of weekly additional composer type of things. I mean, you can get an additional composer credit, but getting a full-time job doing that, I, I think it's, it's probably due to relationships you have with those people. And he says, waiting for the writer's strike to end, right? Um, Linda says, yes, and tread very carefully. Not every library is great, right? Getting back to the question that Natuno Soundtracks had, how do I find great music libraries for sync? Well, 
there are a couple books. Jesse offers a, a nice uh, directory and so does Clint Music. They both offer very cost effective um, books that I've used Jesse's before and and searched through there. And also, but before I search, just like Linda said here, I will go to their website and I will look for that music library and I'll see if that music library is one I even want to. If they have a janky website and don't have any credits and all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to waste my time. I want to make sure, or if I haven't like seen the president or heard about the president of that particular um, that particular library, I'm not going to try to get involved with them. So you got to be careful, I think, just like Linda says here. Um, Arco says, was a bit busy with certified course. I recently enrolled myself. Cool, good. Yeah, I've done Coursera courses. They're great. Well, folks, uh, unless you have another question, I'm going to call it here. We are at 57 minutes or so. It's been fun hanging out with you. Thanks again to Dave Croft, who joined us today. And uh, yeah, got to do research on these libraries and research them. I hope this has been helpful for you today. And uh, for those of you listening, um, if you need any uh, of the information from the video that you didn't see, that you only heard, you can go over to youtube.com slash make music income and, uh, and watch these yourselves. So Brooks out. Thanks for being here. Thank you, uh, Arco, Pete Mason, Natuno, Julian Hartwell, Marty, thanks for being here as usual. Linda, thanks for you for being here as usual. Uh, Walt Williams in the house. Lots of people, signature music in the house. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time here on the Make Music Income Podcast. See you guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye.